I'm Scott Garibay, and I'm with Nerdarchy, for Nerds by Nerds, and I'm with... Nathan Nerdark. Intern Kyle. Alignments are great. No, they're not. Let's talk about that. Jump down in the description below where you can find Nerdarchy the newsletter, gain weekly tips as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. So I myself have dropped the alignment system from my player characters in my game, homebrew game. So, and actually that is not uncommon at all. I really feel, in fact, uh, many tabletop role-playing games have done exactly that. They've taken the alignment out. However, I'm on the other side of that. I keep alignment in, and I think it's really important to keep alignment in for a whole host of reasons. I'll start to unpack them a little bit. Correct. And uh, I invite you to say why. I'll interject why. when yeah, I find it necessary. Absolutely. <laughs> and so, uh, well, before, uh, so I, and I feel like there's certain situations where it's just like, eh, alignment, meh. Nah. But in other situations, I, I really feel it's pertinent to have it in it. So the biggest reason why I think it is there is Gary Gygax. So I feel like he, he Gary Gygax, the more I, I look at the game, I realize that what Gary built at the beginning, it's going to be incredibly hard to improve on it. Uh, and alignment is definitely one of those. I actually think that alignment actually transcends the game. So one, so the, uh, I think the, the biggest reason to keep it in your game is that your game then becomes aspirational. And so you need to know, um, you know, what is my perceived alignment and what is my actual alignment, right? So I would like to say that I am actually lawful good, but I would bet that I'm probably chaotic good. Well, maybe I'm chaotic neutral, right? But by having that structure in there, um, you, you are applying an alignment to your character and then you're thinking about that, how that alignment actually, you know, within our own lives, I think we actually have alignments. So, so the game is reflecting that and is almost, you know, dealing with your life at a metaphysical, like, at a, a metaphilosophical level. I can see that. However, I think if you were looking for more natural characters, I find that my players are really comfortable at the table because their Grog, the dumb half-orc, isn't having an existential crisis of whether or not he's lawful good or not. He's just, I'm going to save that person because I'm nice like that. So, I mean, like, you know... My players know that they're nice. I mean, like, if they play the goodly priest and then all of a sudden they decide, yeah, to save the world, we have to kill this baby. You're like, and he's just like that on it. You're like, whoa, don't you think you'd have some thoughts about that there? That's an interesting. So I would I would counter it that you guys are actually playing PD&D, which is postmodern d and <laughs> I could absolutely see that. <laughs> I, I, could, I could see, uh, so, so from Kyle's perspective, he's got a, a player character and they're not the way that the player's playing that character is um, not really paying attention necessarily. Well, you know, if they're morally good, what does that exactly mean? Rather than just saying, you know, they're in the more in the moment and they're doing this thing to save somebody, but then they're like, all right, well, this has got to happen and this has just got to be the way it's done. So one of the things that why well, I think it's good to keep it in there is the is the alignment shift. Alignment shift is an event within Dungeons and Dragons that doesn't exist in almost any other tabletop role playing game, and when you, and essentially the game master can say, you ha your character has a structure for their morality, right? And now you you know, for all along you've been upholding that structure. And now you are actually doing something which doesn't fit within that structure, and you're going to have an alignment shift. And I've found that some of the most exciting parts of the game come around alignment shift, whereas I feel like a game that doesn't have alignment in it, what you're dealing with is you can have constant alignment shifts, which, to your point, I do think that reflects our culture now, right? And where people really aren't applying alignments to their lives. Um, but, but to me, if you look back at Gary, he was saying... We should look at morality from the perspective of gaming, and here's law, here's chaos, here's good, here's evil, here's neutral. And I think that structure, especially for gamers, can be really useful, and um, an alignment shift is a big event in a, in a great old D&D game that is now missing from some of the other ones. Now, do you have anything like alignment shift? What happens when, when, when a character's morality starts to shift within your game is there is it even acknowledged typically i play a hero's game like i try not to have the evil campaigns too often so a lot of my players are good or neutral um if they go more to the side of good i don't necessarily have to make a big mechanical deal out of it all i typically do is you know if my neutral character becomes good i say that the townspeople like you know he's held up as a hero i'm making sure that he, the player feels good for making that good decision to help people and they see the benefits they reap the benefits of helping people on a more personal level than uh, okay now you could use this plus three holy avenger 
So, and from the opposite side of that, if one of my good players decides I'm just going to do some evil stuff for a long time, I'm going to, like, you know, probably pull that player aside eventually, and I'm not even going to have an issue with it. I'm going to say, I like where you're going with this. Just tell me whenever you want to relinquish him as an NPC, I will make him the villain. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Which... I don't want my players playing the villains, but I will absolutely say, make a new guy, because I'm going to keep this guy as the villain. Like, this is going to be good. That's really fascinating because I actually feel that that reinforces a little bit that you should keep alignment in that the alignment shifts can be triggers. And we've already seen this in one of our games. I have, I've been, I was playing Ace and Shardgale. He was lawful good. He was shifted to lawful neutral because Ted was saying, you've done things which have pulled you out of the lawful good alignment. And that was a trigger that told me. So what I'm saying is you're actually missing some triggers there that would tell that player, like, your first time where you're talking to them, is you guys are having a conversation about shifting from a PC to an NPC. You know, so that's kind of interesting. One other thing, reason why I think it definitely, alignment should definitely be kept in games, is if you were playing Dungeons & Dragons, uh, so I've recently come across this opinion, and I invite your input on it, that get every, the current version of Dungeons & Dragons never competes for best tabletop role-playing game. It is the foundation. It's the granite that everything else is built on, right? So right now, like, there's a precipice game, and it. it's uh, John Harper just brought out. Um, uh, it's called Blades in the Dark. So uh, really high suggest everybody take a look at Blades in the Dark. It's uh, it's actually it's absolutely the precipice of the of the hobby right now, and so what I'm saying is, if you take Dungeons and Dragons and you remove um, alignment, it becomes like all other role-playing games. Uh, very, very few role-playing games and almost no modern role-playing games have alignment. And so you're t so you have to realize Dungeons & Dragons doesn't compete with any other role-playing game. It is the foundation of the hobby. And so we should never take an action that takes Dungeons & Dragons and makes it follow its own followers. What do you think? I could see that, however, I'm also going to argue that I don't want to, uh, in my personal opinion, I don't want to sacrifice my fun at the table, my, me and my group's fun, we really enjoy the way we play it, I'm not going to sacrifice that for the sentimentality of Gygax liked it this way, <laughs> so saith the Gygax. Well, I would yeah, say, rather than, I, I think Scott brought up a lot of good points, rather than sentimentality, there is a structure and a, like, a purpose behind it. I, w I would agree with Scott that if you take that out, that's going to be, you know, what is it, is it? Is it closer to the cipher system now? Is it closer to... Yeah. Is uh, that Fate or Dungeon World or any of those games that don't have alignment? Yeah. Other, yeah. other mechanics aside, like what they should use to do what. Yeah. I could see that. Um, yeah. But 5th edition, I believe, gives enough uh, leeway and GM fiat. They even say the, the rule book, literally half the pages of the rule book, I'm pretty sure, is just take this rule out if you'd like. Like, you know, follow this rule only if you want to. You feel free to take this rule out. Every rule comes stipulated with it. If you feel like not doing this, don't do it. Yeah, and that's where they mention it. But they in the beginning, it's like, you can take anything you want and just not, not have it in. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it's throughout the book. Reiterate it over and over again. Take whatever you don't want and throw it out. So, technically, it comes to the argument of when do we stop being 5th edition? When do we stop being D&D? &D? Because D&D &D says that any loose guidelines of these rules it could be considered D&D. &D. It's not that I play D&D &D and I don't go to other systems simply because I like the alignment system or like anything like that. I've, I'm recently new to the hobby, so I can't even claim that much experience. But I would say for what I have, I've been invested in D&D &D 5e. I know a lot about the system. That's how I'm able to DM. I know the rules. And just saying, like, you know, if you don't like alignment, maybe I should play another system. I don't want to take the time to learn another system. I just don't like one specific rule in this. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing where you're coming from and I, and I definitely, I can't argue with the fact that the, that the creators of the game actually said, make this yours. Um, but I'm just kind of essentially calling people back to play it the way Gary intended it. And also if you do it that way, it transcends the game. Like I, I really believe if you're thinking about alignment for your character, you will start thinking about alignment for you, you yourself as a person. And then that, you know, and that. That's that's a different level, and I think you reach a different level of play when you continually think back to the to the creator, and you know which is you know which is Gary Gygax, and and I think going forward, uh, Gygax is going to be a, a more uh, maybe even a divisive figure because people have to determine where they're going to be at on on where on how they deal with that. Uh, something you brought up about 
taking what you have in the game with alignment and bringing it back into your your real life and self reflection. I think that's one of the the best. Similar to how sci-fi and fantasy can be used to talk about real-world oh, issues yeah, and problems. absolutely. Through a different device that kind of separates the feelings and, and yeah. the vision over something for a storyline. You can kind of perceive it and understand it in a different life, light separated from yourself. Similar to alignment. You know, yeah. if you're doing all these terrible things in the game and you don't think there's anything wrong with it, and they're like, yeah, your alignment is shifting towards evil. And you're like, well, wait, why? Now, what's really strange is the you're point like, you just brought out makes me want to <laughs> agree with you. And the reason why is... I, I didn't think that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect it either. Uh, one of the things that has happened in science fiction is uh, I read a lot of science fiction. Uh, I used to read a lot of science fiction short stories and novels. And I still read, I try to keep in there. There's so much uh, introspection and reflection within science fiction now that I got to the point where I was like, please, I'm begging you, can I please read a story, a science fiction story that has a laser, uh, so somebody has a laser, uh, you know, shoots and a laser and has you. a spaceship because almost every short story, science fiction short story now is talking about cats and people's relationships and yarn and, you know, a whole bunch of issues that really you were like, this is in science fiction now. And so, so I guess you're right. Like we're still, we're still playing the game to have fun. And so, uh, I really do believe that alignment definitely, um, should remain in the game just because as we, you know, as Dungeons and Dragons is really reaching a point where it's, it's, it's getting all this cultural relevance. I really think we need to do everything we can to keep it at its source. The other thing is, how do you deal with alignment languages in your game? That's such a huge part of every game, you know, alignment languages. I'll admit that. How do you mean? Oh, yeah. From second. Now, of course, they're from second edition. But the two of you haven't brought alignment languages into your fifth edition game? No, like a waffle good comment or something something like that? So, actually, uh, in second edition. Or do you mean using it as... Oh, so in second edition of the game, there were alignment languages. So if 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 I'm lawful good and he's lawful good, this. absolutely, we could speak to each other in our languages that were alignment specific. So a lawful good kobold could speak to a lawful good paladin through lawful good alignment. It's crazy. Yeah, exactly. I I could. It see, seems interesting, yeah, but I'm yeah. not seeing the world, real world relevance at yeah. all. No, you're right. I was totally joking. <laughs> yeah. Alignment languages were one of the first things dropped from older uh, older editions. It's crazy it's that it's even in, in, in a the video game. By Scott. That's exactly. I can't believe that's, you. Absolutely. He didn't even wait for the comments yeah. section. Oh, like, yeah. Scott's really knowledgeable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm running with this. Yeah. Like, oh, man, I yeah. can't believe that. Well, alignment <laughs> languages are in the game, but they're they're from older versions, and uh, they were dropped right away because people hated. Yeah, them. I can definitely see. Well, that, that doesn't make yeah. that doesn't make sense unless you're unless you're saying culturally, like you're going like smiling is going to mean like to lawful good people. Yeah. Smiling is means using means like a certain yeah. thing unless you're being an ass. So it's kind of. You know, there's different cues, social cues. I yeah. guess you could say social cues with that could well, be a language, but I think, and I think beyond I think, like some kind of weird yeah. comment that's only for lawful good people, I think that's yeah. a little strange. Well, and I also think, you know... So that I'm glad is, they dropped that. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things, I think alignment does make the game deeper. So if you want... Uh, I, I don't want to use the term shallow. If you want to focus more on the on the lighter side of the game, maybe alignment isn't going to help. But if you want to, you know, if you want to really just explore some deep cultural, social aspects i think alignment really is the pushing board that you're going to push off of through i think that you could still do that i do a lot of that in my games without actually needing a moniker on it i mean like i you don't walk into a town and say oh this town is lawful evil i say no there's a dictator who seems to have an iron grip on the people you, you see signs of revolt that everybody's yelling that no more taxes but never did i ever have to say oh he's lawful evil when you okay, so this is about labeling here. Yeah, you're so there's this right. fight against being labeled as something yeah. and not wanting to be labeled as something, and actually whether or not you are the actual label. So if you're like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm lawful good, so I'm going to do this, this, and that, but someone's saying, well, you've done this and this, so that makes you some, you know, something completely different, or you know, my lawful good characters want to do that particular thing. So that's kind of like you could sum up what kind of town it is by saying it's lawful evil. You're going to say, well. It follows the rules, yep. but it's a hierarchy based off of possible crimes and murders and other things like that. But it's organized and structured so that it's more like a, like a you know, dog-eat-dog dog rather than a commu- an ordered community. And that's the order of it, is that it is dog-eat-dog. Dog. Everybody knows the rules. Everyone knows how to climb the ladder. Yeah. So that's why it's still considered lawful. But that is the heart of the issue. You're absolutely right. Are we going to put a label on it? Are we going to, you know, if this person has done 
um, you know, six good actions, do they do they fall in that good band, or you know, at, because and they don't fall in the band because they only have four evil actions. And and yeah. labels are good when they actually describe or assist in the description of what you see before you, because that's the whole point of you're taking a whole bunch of concept and you're distilling it down to a few words yeah. just to sum it up because otherwise you have to say like well i'm lawful good i do this and i do this and i do this and i do this but under certain circumstances i will not do this or that and then you know and then you have a thousand page book but also i never thought about <laughs> and, it that. and it's just you not yeah. everybody in your society it's just you as that thousand page book so you've got to find a way to like right distill that down to something more concrete and the finality of it. Similarly, like there's, it's that, like the ideas with belief, you have your belief on something. Well, belief isn't just saying, Oh yeah, I guess, I guess that's true or something like that. Your like your belief is like part of your structure of what you really perceive about the world and what you think about the world. It's not like, um, like little kids that get told Santa Claus is real believe Santa Claus is real. They, in fact, they think people that say Santa Claus is not real are lying. Yeah. So you wouldn't think that, you know, all the adults are like, well, we don't really believe in Santa Claus because I don't think someone's lying when they say Santa Claus isn't real. Yeah. So that's kind of like part of that. It's deeper than just saying yay or nay to, to something. It's, you know, part of your understanding of how you think the world works. So one of the ways I try and play bringing characters, I'm bringing characters in it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Talk about my character. Yeah. I have a lawful good uh, cleric of nature who is a reluctant cleric. He's a good person overall, but he's not good in the sense of he's not he wasn't ready to do the deity service that has called upon him, and that is like a completely different level for him yeah. of commitment that he wasn't ready for. But he was still lawful good with everything. He doesn't understand when someone says, "Hey, you know, I'll give you five for, five for this," and I go okay, well, how about six because I really worked on it and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, all right, well, you know, and then they, they, they rip me off by giving me a crud, a crud coin that isn't really a coin. That would be like, I would be in complete shock if someone did that to me. I know it can happen, but that somebody actually did it to me, my character would be in shock from it. and be like, well, this is ridiculous. How did this happen? Yeah. I thought we had a deal like, you know, why isn't this working the way I think the world should work? And I, my, the character over time and experience gains wisdom and understands that, yes, other people do not have your exact structure of belief. And he deals with that. But at the same time, he wishes that everybody had the same structure of belief. He has that kind of like inherent desire for everyone to be good, to be lawful, to be ordered. So he is uncomfortable with other things outside of that simply because they he can't identify easily with them because of how they think and how they how they think the world works. He's like, no, the world really works like this. You're just doing it wrong. So is the how way exactly he think. would you using the conventional alignment system? How would you align that character? Uh, that character would be lawful good based well, off of based the off order of he thinks said, yeah. should be you know believes should be in society. The idea of things like boiling it down to just simply the golden rule. Uh, and like personal freedoms and interactions with people, and also as a person in society, your obligations to assist others when needed. Now, I only have one question to follow this up to support my point. I really liked what you had to say there. Now, it takes a lot more oxygen to say, but which is the more compelling character? The very long synopsis that he just gave us, or I'm lawful good? Yeah, but. My point is, I don't think your characters, every time they come up to the table, is, oh, by the way, just to remind you, this is my character. You Let's know, all take ten minutes to explain it. When you meet right, up with because, your friends, yeah. do you ask them what they do for a living, how they feel about life every time? Like, I, honestly, when I get together with my char players' characters, I don't need to know, like, maybe the first time I need to know where they've been, where they're going, and what they're doing right now. But not every time we step up to the table do I say, and what is your... Yeah, yeah, feelings yeah. about morality today. One I, don't, thing it, I don't really think, uh, to be honest, I don't really get into everybody else's characters that much. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's fair. Most people I know Asen's going off the rails, yeah. but I, you know, that's Asen's character. I know he's going to be going off the rails. Yeah, to a certain extent. Absolutely, and I, you know, and I, it's interesting because as you were talking, I realized I think the good way to think about morality, uh, the real. Alignments are morality labels. That's exactly what they are. And what we're talking about is if labels should be applied to sh should be applied to the game, right? And to me, I go back to what I was thinking about before, where 
man, if there's ever been a game in the world that labels things, it's got to be D&D. Like, uh, you know, just think about a dagger. It you know, has piercing damage. It has, it's non-magical. Like, every single item we in the game is We say which labeled. race is better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, there's, there's yeah. different powers and levels of the average race. Yeah. So, like, elves are just more dexterous. Yeah. They and they get a mechanical benefit in the game. So I mean, like everything oh, yeah. is kind of like marked out. So that's just interesting. Is like your your group is saying we want to remove labels from this one portion of the game. Yeah, but you guys are embracing labels almost everywhere else. The you funny thing saying? is, I could definitely see that. But I'm so, I'm like the wide open free GM. I guess you could call me the hippie DM if you really want to. Uh, if, I like your postmodern label. <laughs> if anybody wants to. Like, you know, I've, I haven't had anybody of my characters actually go into this level of depth, but if somebody said, my dwarf was raised by elves, or maybe if he says, he's really not that stocky, he's really lithe and he's really quick, I would say, okay, take the stats of an elf, you're a dwarf, congratulations. Like, you know, we don't have to label this, I could just give you a random set of numbers that applies to the factual physical form that you have, and we'll call it whatever we want. We'll call yeah. it whatever you want, necessarily. It's well, you would be an extreme outlier in that instance. Oh, I absolutely would. Yeah. <laughs> because there's extreme outliers with somebody who's like, oh, I put eight in my constitution, so I have a ten. Mm -hmm. As a dwarf, that's really an extreme outlier because that's the minimum, like, weakest, less, least hardy dwarf ever. Look, we know is, from Drizzt, everybody wants to be a snowflake. I just let them snowflake if they want to snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you're taking everybody's taking a time out of the game to out uh, of time out of their week to play a game for like however many hours. So, I mean, I understand that there's a compelling reason to just let people go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But I, I think that was a great exploration of alignment yes. overall. Um, Any closing thoughts on alignment? Or what do you guys think? Well, I think I think just in general, that's what I'm going to go with. The, yeah. I, I, you know, that there is a there yeah. is a benefit. Okay, my closing thought is this. There is a benefit to just letting, you know, hey, we want to have some fun. It's a looser game. Yeah. But I, I do like the kind of moral quandaries and kind of like really inner depths of of the 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 concept of you know delving in deep into your character and then drawing back out from it like direction and purpose i would like to say that while my stance hasn't changed and my my weekly gaming group will not be adjusting our system uh, I definitely see where your feelings on the alignment system definitely come into play. Um, honestly, I would not be opposed to play in a campaign where this the alignment system Which was... Was structured. Yeah, yeah, exactly, where it was absolutely prominently featured. I feel like it could be very interesting to see how that would go, but it's just not for my game. Uh, actually, I'm glad we talked because uh, it really helps me to understand alignment or morality labels, or morality tags, and that what... Gary Gygax did was he you know literally like he was thinking oh well this you know this magical sword has fire type damage and it has piercing damage and slashing damage and it is immediate you know a light weapon and it, you know and he really he thought about the heart of humanity and applied these labels of law and chaos and good and evil and neutrality and uh you know that that's uh so you know just thinking of alignment as morality labels and that the creator of the game thought that deeply about mankind is, is pretty, pretty interesting. So that's a really good exploration of alignment. Let us know what you think in the comments below. While you're at it, like, share, and subscribe. Come and check us out over on the secret Facebook group. Indeed. And also come on over to nerdarchy.com where there's a lot of great articles, great writers, great concepts to put into your game this very week. Until next time. Stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.